Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with homemade dill pickles. That's right, I'm going to show you how to make your own pickles the old-fashioned way, which means naturally fermenting them using little more than salt. But before we go any further, I should warn you, I've only done this a handful of times, so what I don't know about pickling could fill a book. But having said that, hopefully this video shows with just a little bit of info that anybody, including people like us, can make their own delicious pickles at home. So let's go ahead and get started with the three most important things you're going to need. So first up, we're going to need some pickling cucumbers. And I believe this variety is called Kirby, which is the most popular variety. And what we want them to be is fairly small and very, very fresh and firm. And then besides those little cukes, we also need some dill weed. And you really do want to try to find flowering dill. And while you can, and many people do, use the dry dill made from just the leaves, I believe it's the flowers that really impart that classic flavor. And then besides the dill and the cucumbers, the real key ingredient here, the salt. And the basic brine we're going to make calls for one tablespoon of kosher salt per cup of water. And of course, I'll give specific info on the blog post. You can also use sea salt or something called pickling salt. But what you'll want to avoid is just regular table salt. That might not work. But like I said, we'll cover those specifics on the blog post. For now, let's go ahead and put this pickling brine together. So I went ahead and I measured some nice cold fresh water into a saucepan, to which I'm going to add some peeled garlic, as well as the aforementioned kosher salt. We will also want to add some traditional pickling spices, which includes some whole coriander seed, as well as some black peppercorns. I'm also going to toss in three or four bay leaves. And not only is that going to be for flavor, but apparently there's tannins in that leaf that help keep the pickles crisp. And then last but not least, I'm going to put a couple whole cloves in there. And we'll go ahead and give that a stir. And because my water was really cold, as were my cucumbers for that matter, and we want to ferment this at about 75 degrees ideally, I decided to put it on low flame for just a minute, just to take the chill off the water, sort of bring it up to room temp, maybe a few degrees over. And in just a few short seconds later, my salt had dissolved, and that brine was ready to use. So like I said, I only did that to take the chill off and dissolve the salt a little faster. So feel free to ignore that entire step and just stir yours until it dissolves. And then once our brine is set, we are ready to start the lacto-fermentation process. Ooh, sounds scientific, doesn't it? And what we're going to need is something to do that in. And for me, I like to use this old Boston baked bean crock, which I find is the perfect size for a two-pound batch. Plus, it looks like something they'd use back in the olden times. And we'll start off by putting some of our dillweed in the bottom followed by some cucumbers, followed by a little more dillweed, followed by more cucumbers. And then once our dill and cucumbers have been properly crocked, we will carefully ladle and or pour in our brine, which again should be at room temp. And we do want to fill that pretty much all the way up. And then one minor but fun task. You definitely want to give this crock the old shake a shake -a, the old tapa tapa, which should and probably will bring any air bubbles up to the top. And then speaking of the top, one other very important factor is our pickles ferment. We want to make sure they stay below the surface. So what I like to do is take a small ramekin and place it right on top like this. And then we'll just top that with a little extra brine. And that should prevent any of those cucumbers from being exposed to the air. Speaking of which, I just checked with the spoon to make sure there was no air bubbles trapped underneath. And then what we'll do is we'll cover that and transfer it somewhere where it's going to stay, hopefully, at a consistent temperature somewhere between, say, 65 and 75. So for me, this old wooden beverage cooler works perfectly. And we'll place that in and we'll let it ferment for about a week. And of course, we're going to peek at it. So this is me looking at mine after about four days. And thanks to millions of beneficial microorganisms, we have fermentation going on. So don't be scared if you see bubbles. You may even see a little bit of foam. Your brining liquid may get a little cloudy. But if you measured your salt right, none of these things should be a problem. And by the way, at any time, if your brine level drops, just top it off with a little fresh. So I will assume you'll be checking yours every day. And if this is your first batch, probably like seven or eight times a day. So I let mine go for another four days. And after eight days, this is what it looked like. You may very well get a little bit of this white mold forming on the top. That's nothing more than yeast, I believe. Nothing to be worried about. You can just skim that off. But here's another way to do it if you want, which is kind of a cool trick. If we transfer this into a bowl, you can flood the top with fresh brine. And that's going to wash away anything that was floating at the surface. And at that point, we could continue brining. But like I said, mine have gone for eight days. So I'm actually going to try one of these to see if they're done. So let me go ahead and pull one out. And it certainly looks like a pickle. But let's see if it sounds and tastes like a pickle. Sound, check. Taste, check. 
there's nothing like the taste of a homemade, naturally fermented pickle. Of course, it has that briny flavor like all pickles, but it also has that signature sourness that's produced as that lactic acid forms during the fermentation process. And the longer you let these ferment, the more sour they will get. So like I said, about a week to 10 days is usually what I go for. But again, that's going to be one of the variables you're in charge of. And for me, at least, it's never not fascinating that this is achieved with nothing more than a simple salt brine. I mean, it's borderline magic. And obviously, there are thousands of different combinations of pickling spices you can use. You are, after all, the Don Rickles of your pickles. So don't be a hockey puck and think you have to use the exact same spices. You don't. And once you've tested them and you've determined they fermented long enough, the last official step is to transfer these into something you can put in the fridge. And of course, you're going to want to top them with the brine. And in case you're wondering, that's going to look extra cloudy when you first pour that brine in. But the good news is that sediment will settle and that brine will clear up. So as I mentioned earlier, don't worry about a little cloudiness. That just means everything worked right. And then we'll latch that up and transfer it into the fridge where we can enjoy these for months to come. How many months exactly? I can't say for sure, but somewhere between several and many. And by the way, the next time the kids are looking for a science project for school, this is the perfect project. Fun, interesting, and you get to eat the results. I mean, a baking soda and vinegar volcano is fun and interesting, but it makes a terrible snack. So whether you do this in the name of science or simply in the name of something to put next to a sandwich, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.